This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can create a stormy rainy day effect using GIMP. You could take an image that was taken on a sunny day and create the illusion that it's uh, now a stormy rainy day. So to follow along with this tutorial you'll have to open up the image I've linked in the description of the video. Uh, it's this one here, this field image. I'm just going to right click that and open it with GIMP. And by the way, if you'd like to know how you can customize GIMP with these new icons, a link to that information will be in the description of the video. So now that we have this image open, the first thing we want to do is right click on the field layer right here and add an alpha channel. And then we want to duplicate that layer. So we'll come over here where it says uh, create a duplicate of the layer and add it to the image. Click that once and we'll click it again actually. We're going to have a second duplicate copy. And we'll take this bottom one down here and just turn this off, that little eye icon turn that off and we'll go to the top one up here and in order to uh, create this effect the first thing we're gonna have to do is strip out this sky and add in a different sky image which was uh, these these storm cloud sky so to do that we're gonna have to separate the um, the foreground from the background here and what works best for this image I find is uh, we'll first go to colors and curves and I'm gonna take this node up here in the top right and bring that to the left a little bit until the sky starts to turn really white. What I'm really paying attention to is right here where the sky meets the horizon and the edge of the trees. We're waiting for that to really turn um, as white as it possibly can without losing the color in the grass there. So something like that's pretty good. And then I wanna take the center of this line and just drag this in a little bit so we get even more separation. Maybe bring it down to about there. So if you notice going around the edge of the trees, it's pure white. And then down here, the grass is green. That's, uh, that's, those are the key areas we're paying attention to here. So that's pretty good right there. I'll go ahead and click OK. And what I'm going to do now to further distinguish the foreground and the background, I'll go to Colors and Desaturate. And I'll choose the top one up here, Luminosity, I mean Lightness. And you'll notice it makes the uh, foreground grass right here a little more visible. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now what I want to do is go to Color and Threshold. And it's going to strip everything down to just black and white. And I'm going to take this little node in the center here and bring this to the, to the right a little bit. Maybe about that much. And what we're paying attention to here is the separation between the foreground and the background, meaning the trees and the horizon here with the grass and the background. We want that to be black, the foreground to be uh, black, and the background to be white. And it doesn't matter up here where this is black and there's some white down here. Don't worry, we're going to go and fix that in a second. But uh, what we're really paying attention to is the separation, the separating boundary between those two subjects. And uh, I think that right there is pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I'm going to, I'm going to grab the brush tool. And I'll grab uh, this brush here, the hard one. And the size of this, I'll just make this pretty big. Maybe uh, like 300. And I'll just go ahead and color in this bottom area with black. Color that in like that. And I'm going to have to go up here a little bit and be a little more granular. So uh, I'm going to drop this brush size down a little bit. And I'm going to zoom into this area by holding control and rolling up the mouse wheel. I'm just going to color this area in. Just make sure not to color in the area between the trees. Because that's uh, if you turn the visibility of that layer off, you notice there's some sky coming in between those trees. And we want that cropped out as well. So I'll just leave that as it is. I'll, I'll take out this area here because there's some grass in there. Oops. Go ahead and take out these little details here. Uh, I'm just going to be really quick with this. I'm not going to get too granular. If you want to take your time with this, you can, but I don't want this video to be um, too long, so I'll just do this pretty quickly. I, I, you notice I left this little white spot in there because if you turn the visibility off, you notice there's a bit of sky coming through there. And this you'll have to kind of uh, like fudge the edge there. There we go. All right, now let's zoom out by holding uh, control and rolling down the mouse wheel. And we'll fill all of this in with white. So I'll just come over here and switch the foreground and background colors. And I'll fill this in with white. Make this brush a little bigger. All right, so now we have those two items separated. What we can do is we can go to this button up here, select by color, 
and click on the white area. And what we could do now is delete that layer by pressing the delete button. And now we could press delete on the keyboard and it's going to get rid of the sky. Now we can go to select none. And what we're going to do now is drop in, drop in our picture of storm clouds as the background. So we'll go over to our storm clouds image. Uh, let me shrink this window down so I can click and drag that into GIMP. Go ahead and just click and drag that into GIMP. Uh, I'm going to take this layer and bring it, click and drag it beneath the field layer. So it goes in the background. And I'm going to grab the move tool and I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And I'll hold control to lock it onto the vertical axis. Maybe move that up about that much because I want some of those dark clouds in there because I think it looks, looks pretty good. And then we can go ahead and click on the field layer again. And if you notice here, I'm going to zoom in on this area. If you notice, there's still some uh, like fragments of the sky left in there. So in order to get rid of that, there's several ways you can go about getting rid of that. But uh, in this video, the way I'm going to do it is by right-clicking that field layer and going to Alpha to Selection. And then I'll go to Select, Invert, and then Select, Grow. And I'm going to grow it by one pixel and go ahead and click OK. And if you zoom back in, you notice it took about one pixel off the edge of everything. And with that selected, you could just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And now we can go to select none, and you'll see the blue area of that sky is cropped out for the most part. Now again, if you want to spend some time with this, you know, you know, painting it in with brushes and everything and being more meticulous, go right ahead. I'm just doing this. This is going to be pretty much rudimentary for what I'm doing in this video. So the next step that we have to do is... Um, you notice the edges of like the trees and the grass here, it kind of looks pasted in. It doesn't really look right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather these edges a little, a little bit to make it blend in with the background a little better. So I will right click on that layer and go to alpha to selection. And again, I'll go to select, invert, and then again, select, grow, and I'll grow it by one pixel. And then I'll go to filters, blur, and I'll go to Gaussian Blur. And I'm going to give it a two-point blur. So just type in two and go ahead and click OK. And let me see if I can zoom. Yeah, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to show you. I'll go ahead and click OK. And it's going to blur the edges of everything. Let me go to Select None. And it blurred the edges of everything. And if you notice now, it blends in pretty well. The only problem now is like this, uh, the grass here looks kind of uh, jagged. Like there's a lot of um, aliasing going on or something. So... Uh, I'm going to touch this up real quick. I'll just go to the uh, eraser tool and I'll choose a soft, uh, like, like a medium soft brush like that. Maybe, uh, maybe that one there, number two hardness. I'll bring the size down. Bring that down much more actually. And I'll just go and soften up those edges a little bit. Just to make that look a little more like it's a nicer transition. It doesn't look so jagged. And if you notice, there's some like transparency going through the grass there. So to fix that, I'm just going to hold Alt and brush over that. And that'll color that back in. So that's another, that's a good thing to keep in mind. Like if you accidentally erase something like that, you can hold Alt and paint it back in with the brush, with the uh, eraser tool. So uh, let me zoom out. Again, to zoom in and out, I'm just holding control and rolling up and down the mouse wheel. To move the page around, I'm pressing down the mouse wheel and moving the mouse. And there we have our storm clouds cropped in with the foreground. Uh, what we have to do now is uh, blend the colors a little bit because the, uh, the, the, the color of the grass and the trees here doesn't really match the background. It still kind of looks like it's pasted in. So to do that, I'm going to right click on the field layer. And again, we'll go to alpha to selection. And once I've done that, I'm going to create a new layer by clicking on the button that says create a new layer. And I want to choose transparency. Go ahead and click OK. And now I want to flip this back over. I want to click on the color black and I'm going to choose like a shade of purple over here. Like a violet shade, maybe like a more dull violet shade, something down here like this, a little darker. And if you want to use the same color I'm using, I ended up choosing 3C383F. Go ahead and click OK. And with this new layer selected, what we want to do is go to Edit fill with foreground color and then we'll go to uh, the drop down here where it says mode and we'll choose hard light and then we can go to select none and if you notice it kind of darkened it up and it made it match the uh, the clouds a little bit better 
And if you want, you could even play with, you could even adjust the opacity uh, to however you see fit. So I think uh, maybe like, um, depending on the shade you use, I think maybe like 88 looks pretty good. And the final step now would be to add in some rain. So uh, to do that, I'm gonna create a new layer, uh, click on transparency, click okay. And the brush I'm gonna use is called confetti. Um, it's the confetti brush. If you, uh, you don't have that brush installed, I'll have a link to it in the description of the video. So go ahead and install that, br uh, that brush and you can just click refresh and it should, it should, the brush should pop up in here without you having to close out of GIMP. So once we have that brush, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to change the size of the brush to, uh, maybe like 300 and I'm just going to go ahead and paint in. Oops, you know what? I need the uh, paintbrush tool. The brush, uh, yeah, paintbrush. Just go ahead and paint in individual spots going across the page like this. And it doesn't matter if it looks like it's repeated or it doesn't look natural. It doesn't doesn't really matter because we're going to alter this pretty uh, significantly in just a second. So go ahead and fill this in with little splotches like that. And we'll go to filter, I mean colors, and invert. Then we'll go to filters, blur, motion blur. And we're going to choose linear. For the length, we want 92. And for the angle, we want 50. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And there we have our rain. You could even go and drop the opacity of this a little bit. Maybe like that, that looks pretty good. And if you notice around the edges here, it's a little uh, it's a little rough. So I'll just grab the eraser tool with a soft with a soft brush and just maybe erase that out of there. Like that. And there we have it. We've created our stormy, rainy day effect. And if you want to notice the difference, we could take our original fields layer, click and drag that all the way to the top layer, and then temporarily turn on the visibility. And you can see we went from a sunny day there's some pretty bad weather. So uh, that's how you can do that with GIMP. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.